Ransomware is malware which is designed to hold a victim's information at ransom. This is not a new concept. In fact, it's been around as long as 1989, with recent attacks such as WannaCry, TeslaCrypt, and Petya resulting in a total of $20 billion of damages worldwide. With the recent shift to working from home, ransomware has only become more common. Nowadays, businesses are attacked every 11 seconds. In this video, let's see how easy it is to develop our own ransomware. For this project, we're going to use the Go programming language because of its cross-platform support. Installing Go is a simple process. First, we'll go to the installation page. Next, we'll download the archive. Once that's done, we'll start up the terminal and run the following commands. We're going to add Go to our paths so we can run it from everywhere. And at this point, Go should be installed. So this is how our program is going to work. We're going to have two programs, one to encrypt files and one to decrypt files. They will both loop through all the files in a target directory and use AES in Galois counter mode to encrypt them. This is a symmetric cipher. So using one key, we should be able to encrypt and decrypt the files. With Go set up, we can get to work on our project. I've already set up a programming environment for us. I have a target directory home that will be encrypting with the ransomware and a script which is to reset the environment. So inside this folder, I have a couple of folders, bill, root, sam. If we run this ransomware as a non-root user, it shouldn't be able to encrypt the files in the root folder as they're owned by root. We're just throwing that in there to make sure that our program can handle different situations. I like to use tmux, so I'll set that up and we can get to work on our encryption program. The first thing you have to do in every Go program is set up the package, so let's do that. We can import some basic packages, like format, and we can set up the main function. Just to make sure everything is working correctly, let's check, and it is working. In this ransomware, what we will do is we'll loop through all the files and directories in a target directory. So in this case, home is our target. We'll loop through all the folders, all the files, see what there is, encrypt it with AES, and we'll delete the original files. So the first thing we have to do in this program is initialize AES. Let's set up a private key. For AES, this private key has to be 32 bytes long. This is the secret key that will be used. Next, we can set up the initial block for the AES cipher. Uh, to do this, we first need to import AES. So, next. We set up a new cipher using the private key we just defined. We should check for errors because if there's an error while setting up AES, our ransomware isn't going to work. Oops. And I missed an equal sign. Next, we can initialize GCM mode. and check for errors again. To do this, we need to import one more package, the cipher. And at this point, AES should be set up and ready for us to use. So we can get to work on looping through all the files. We need to import another package to do this. Path, file path and let's walk through the files. In our case, we're using the home target directory that I set up for this.
we can skip directories because our ransomware isn't going to encrypt the folder. It's going to encrypt the files that are within the folder. We can check that like this using the file info object. So if it's not a directory, we will encrypt the file. And we can just print that out for testing. And let's make sure that it's actually looping through these files correctly. Right, I uh, forgot to import OS. GCM is declared but not used, and I'm missing a return. Right. Right. So we can add a return nil to the end of this function. Go doesn't let you declare variables and not use them, so we will use GCM later, but for now, let's just do this. So we can see we're looping through the files correctly. Let's work on actually encrypting these files. The first thing we have to do is read the contents of the file that we want to encrypt. So we're going to read the file and save it in the original variable. We want to make sure there was uh, no error before we continue. Otherwise, we can just say there was an error and move on. Error while reading the file contents. At this point, the contents of the file should be stored in the original variable. Next, we can encrypt the contents. We will set up a nonce. Nonce stands for number used once. So we have that set up. And gcm.seal is what's actually doing the encryption. We're passing the original contents and the nonces, and encrypted will store the encrypted bytes of the original file. And this is all encrypted using the private key that we have defined here at the top. AES is a symmetric cipher, so using this key we should be able to decrypt everything. Now that we have the encrypted contents, we can go ahead and write it to our encrypted file. Uh, we can use the original path and add an enc extension. It doesn't have to be enc, but in this case, I'm just using it. And we need to set the file permissions. We can use 666. This means read and write, no execution probably possible to find the original permissions and store them, but this is just an example. We have to check that there was no error again before we continue. If there was an error, we can print that out. Error while writing contents. So at this point we read the file, we encrypted the file, we wrote out the file, all that's left is to delete the original file. OS.remove path delete the original file. And uh, let's see. I'm missing imports again. IO crypto brand. And I made a typo in original somewhere. Here it is. Okay, so. It encrypted these files. It tried to encrypt root. It had an error because root.txt is owned by root and we're running this as the Kali user. So that's to be expected, but everything else should be encrypted at this point. Let's take a look. We can look at this ID RSA, right? It's encrypted. That's certainly not what it's supposed to look like. We can check that there's no original files to make sure they were deleted successfully. Okay. Okay, so it looks like all these files were encrypted. 
So it all worked, everything was encrypted. Writing the decryptor is a very similar process. AES is a symmetric cipher, so encryption and decryption basically works the same way. So we can copy this encryption file, rename it to decryption, and get to work. The first thing we want to change is, well, of course, the victim won't know what the private key is. We want him to send us a couple of bitcoins and we'll give him the key in return, right? Let's ask that from him. Please send me 0.2 bitcoin and I will send you the key. Let's get the key from him. So it's scan line, I believe, to get user input. And we can delete this key because the victim doesn't know what it is. We took input as a string, so let's cast that to a byte array, and we can go down to the loop. So, target files are the same, still skipping directories, we're not encrypting, we're decrypting files. And let's read the file contents. This is not the original contents anymore, this is the encrypted contents. We will be decrypting bytes, so we can delete that and decrypt the bytes. So, we aren't going to generate a nonce this time, we'll just extract it from the encrypted bytes. So, these should be the first, first nonce-sized bytes from the encrypted bytes. Uh, next, we will remove them from the encrypted bytes, the nonce I mean. we can go ahead and decrypt it. So gcm.open is like the inverse function to gcm.seal. Pass all the required parameters and original should be the decrypted file at this point. So we can write the decrypted contents. Original, and we don't want the enc extension anymore, so let's remove that. We can use path up to path length minus 4, which should be dot enc. We don't need the encrypted file anymore, so let's delete that. And the decryption should work at this point. We probably have a couple of extra imports. We do, we have io and crypto.rand are not used anymore, so we can delete them. And at this point, it should decrypt our files. Please send me two Bitcoin and I will send you the key. Okay, we know the key. This is the secret key that will be used. And it decrypted all the files, except for root, of course, but root was never encrypted. Actually, hold up. Root.txt was not encrypted, so there's no point to try and decrypt it. We can skip it up here. So path ln path minus four equals dot enc. Then we'll decrypt it. And if it doesn't end in enc, we can just skip the files. One more time, let's encrypt everything. Let's decrypt everything. Okay, this is the secret key that will be used. Okay, so colon's in the wrong place. This is the secret key that will be used. And everything is decrypted. So, there you go. Looks like a decrypted private key. All files should be decrypted. Let's check it out. Yep, looks about right. We can see that the root.txt was skipped because it didn't have enc in the file name. If we were to run this as the root user, of course, all files should be encrypted. In fact, we can check that out. So, sudo go run encryption.go. Go is not found because it's only in the path for the Kali user. So, sudo user local go bin go run encryption. This time there was no error when encrypting root.txt, and if we check it out, it should be encrypted. It is, okay, and we can try to decrypt everything. Go 
bin go run decryption. This is the secret key that will be used. Let's see. Let's see. Yep. Okay. So it was decrypted. So we've already proven that this program works, but let's see if it runs on Windows. Spoiler alert, it does. You just need to do a bit of compiling, so... We can set the Go operating system to Windows and the architecture to AMD64. And build encryption.go. At this point we should have an exe that we can run on Windows. Uh, we can go ahead and build the decryption while we're at it. And we should have two EXCs. Uh, let me just transfer these over to my virtual machine. And we're in Windows, so let's download these files. Okay. So, on our desktop, we have a home folder, which is our target directory once again, and we have passwords.txt, which has some very nice passwords. Let's try to encrypt it. So, we have encryption.exe. And it says it encrypted home passwords.txt. Let's check. Looks to be encrypted. We can check the contents just to make sure. And uh, yeah, that's definitely not what the original contents were, right? We can try decrypting it. it would run. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Alright, this is the secret key we will use. Alright, ah, this is the secret key that will be used. There you go, and passwords.txt should be decrypted. It is. So, not only does our ransomware work on Linux, but it works on Windows as well, and it should work on Mac as well, because Go allows you to compile the programs you write for other operating systems and architectures than the one you're on right now. Uh, we did get an alert from Windows Defender, but it didn't delete the files. Okay, so it just gave a notification and didn't do anything. We can try scanning the files. No threats. No threats. Okay, I don't know what that alert was about because it said there are no threats, so... Okay. We did get the one alert from Windows Defender, so let's see what VirusTotal says about our file. So we're going to use encryption.exe, confirm the upload, and let's see what they say. Okay, so surprisingly, only 2 out of 71 vendors have detected this file as malicious. Uh, we have Elastic and Secure Age. Windows Defender said it's fine, but it did give us the alert, so I'm not really sure what exactly is up with that. But 2 out of 71, that's kind of scary to think about. So, thank you for sticking around till the end of this video. It should go without saying that this was made for purely educational purposes and you should never run ransomware on someone else's computer unless you have their permission. I hope you learned something new and if you enjoy this video, please consider subscribing, leaving a like, leaving a comment, and I'll see you in the next one.